Why do you believe that your religion is the true religion? If you ask a believer this question, most will give you rational reasons why they believe. However, behind this hides an emotional and irrational attachment. Religion for the believer is part of his identity, his place in the world, his family, community, his meaning, direction and security. Rational reasons have very little to do with why a person believes in a religion. One only has to look at the simple fact that most Muslims were born to Muslim families, most Christians to Christian families, most Hindus to Hindu families and so on, to see that the main determining factor of what religion you believe is birth and not a well thought out rational process. Had these people who so ardently tell you that their religion is the true religion been born to families of a different religion, they would of course be defending that religion instead. And it's not just people who are born into a faith that are emotionally attached to their religion. Converts can have just as strong emotional attachments. For example, as a result of marriage to a Muslim, falling in love with a particular culture or community, or feelings of alienation from their own religion. Those who leave a religion are also not immune to having emotional reasons why they left their faith. In fact, no one is immune. We are all swayed by deeper emotional and irrational motives. And we all have beliefs we protect from cold, hard, critical examination. I myself was born a Muslim and became very devout for many years. But when I started losing my faith, I gradually started seeing flaws and contradictions in Islam that I hadn't noticed before. It was like looking at a familiar picture and suddenly noticing new things in it. It was a strange feeling and I kept asking myself why hadn't I seen these things before? The answer is that our emotional attachments make us selective and biased about what we see. We favour information that confirms our preconceptions and we reject information that contradicts them. Think about evangelical Christians, young earth creationists, Mormons or Jehovah Witnesses. You can talk to these people until you're blue in the face but they're totally immune to logic because they're utterly convinced they are right. You can say anything but they duck and dive and dismiss every piece of evidence you present. It's like the shutters are down and there's nobody home. And the strange thing is, they don't know they're not listening. They aren't lying to you. They think they're being perfectly rational and you are the one who is being unreasonable, ignorant or even hostile. It's amazing how easily a believer will take any criticism personally as an insult or an attack. That's because for him, it is personal. You are not debating what you may think is the particular issue. You are threatening his identity, his family, his comfort zone, his whole world. This is why the debates I see here on YouTube and on forums are largely a waste of time and fall on deaf ears. A believer's starting point is his faith. Their religion is true and all discussions are only about defending that point. The people criticizing their religion are in the grip of Satan. They are evil and probably working for the Jews. But the situation is not hopeless. People can and do overcome it. The first step is to acknowledge that this emotional attachment exists. The next step is to have the courage to open up your beliefs to doubt. Since doubt must be the starting point for any rational analysis, not faith. Allow yourself to be led by the facts, not your preconceptions. Be prepared to accept the outcome, no matter how emotionally painful that may be. This, of course, is extremely difficult. But if your beliefs are true, then you have nothing to worry about. If they are not true, then you have everything to gain.